Hello, everyone. Welcome to How to Read Chinese Poetry podcast. I'm Zhong Qicai, the program host. In this podcast program, my colleagues and I aim to introduce cutting-edge scholarship on Chinese poetry to a broad general audience. We will present 52 episodes covering the major poetic genres developed over China's long history. Each episode features close reading of one or more of the best-known Chinese poems, with an aim to illuminate their literary greatness and cultural significance. For all the discussed poems, Chinese texts, English translation, romanization, and brief notes are provided at our website, howtoreadchinesepoetry.com. By following the 52 episodes, listener will gain a bird's eye view of the thematic, formal, and generic evolution of Chinese poetry from antiquity to the modern era. Instruct and delight is what we wish to accomplish in each talk. Without further ado, let's begin. Hello, everyone. Today, our guest host, Professor Lian, will present his third and last episode on song poems, entitled Poetry of Rambunctious Wit and Impudent Humor. Let us welcome Professor Lian. A survey of the representative Sanju works, no matter how brief, cannot leave out song poems of witticism and humor. The poem we have here is by a poet whose hallmark can be easily seen even from a casual glance at the list of the topics of his songs. On baldness, big fish, turtle with green hair, long-haired little dog, fat couple, and sister Wang got beaten in a bathroom, and so on and so forth. The poet is Wang Heqing, known almost exclusively for his raw and exuberant humor. His works on trivial, vulgar, and erotic subjects tear about the cultural milieu of his time and are among the best reminders of the Sanqi genre's origin in the streets, markets, and entertainment quarters. The song is a parody of the Yong Wu poem or the poetry on subjects. The subject here is a big butterfly. Anecdote has it that one year in the early 1260s, a gigantic butterfly suddenly appears from nowhere in the Yuan capital Dadu, present day Beijing. It is believed that it is this big insect that gave the poet an excuse to write this song. Since the poet tells us unmistakably that his butterfly flies directly from Zhuangzi's famous dream, it is a good time to examine how a seemingly simple Sanqi song in a plain language of everyday speech and on a flippant subject that appears more to the unlettered can also be charged or riddled with allusions, a game only lettered practitioners of traditional classical poetry is good at. According to Zhuangzi's famous dream, this carefree philosopher does not know whether he is his own self taking the form of a butterfly in a dream or a butterfly dreaming that he is Zhuangzi. The original message is that there is no hard and fast demarcation between reality and illusion. But as time passes, the butterfly dream has become a fable reminding people of the illusory and ephemeral nature of human life. 
it is but a dream. The poet borrows the powerful image from Zhuang Zi and then removes it with a cliche metaphor of the two-winged pleasure seeker, which in itself alludes to the numerous flower picking verses exemplifying the Chinese version of copy DM. In this way, he defends with disarming wit the dissolute lifestyle of a womanizer by using the simplistic yet popular interpretation of Zhuangzi's philosophical butterfly, that life is short and that one should pick the flower while it is in blossom. The image of the butterfly's two wings mounting on the east wind, with east wind standing for springtime, does not merely imply the high time for flower picking and emphasize it is the sense of urgency in the copy DM motif. The image is meant to convey the sensual pleasure that the butterfly experiences in its carefree sweeping of the flowers. The thrill and the sense of freedom one finds in the airborne pose is reminiscent of the ethos surrounding the image of the big peng bird from the Zhuangzi text, whose two wings are as big and as clouds and mount on the back of a wind in its 90,000 miles journey at one stretch. The title of the chapter from which this image comes by accident is Free and Easy Wandering, Xiao Yao Yu, and has become a set phrase used to describe the totally unlimited or unlicensed freedom. The reading of this hidden allusion in the image can be justified by further internal evidence in the song. With his enviable virile feats, the big butterfly shames to death the small time flower chasers like the honeybees in exactly the same manner in which Zhuangzi's pumper thought the small creatures like the little doves and quails with his size and movements of heavenly proportion. The poet ends the song by making effortlessly and in passing yet one more allusion to old texts. The flower vendor comes from a Song Dynasty poem titled On Butterfly, in which flower sellers urged on by the excitement of the beautiful spring scene, one after another rush to the other side of the bridge. In a new context, the role played by the flower vendors changes. Can they be those who sell the flower? That is the pimps. By having them fend across the bridge, the poet seems to allow the big butterfly one more chance to demonstrate his capability with a gentle flap of its wings. It does not need any help from matchmakers of any kind. The travesty of the Zhuangzi images in this song carries only the positive note. It totally transfigures the otherwise disdainful and distasteful playboy image of the big butterfly and makes it glow with the luster of the carefree spirit of the original butterfly from the Zhuangzi and the ease and the elegant condescending air of the big peng bird from the same text. One can label the butterfly and place it in the feng liu category. But just as the term feng liu can mean anything from debauched and dissolute to talented and elegant and even heroic, 
the true color of the big butterfly is open to anybody's interpretation. Judging from the way the poet presents the butterfly, the apparent uncertainty and puzzlement expressed by the inquisitive phrase Nan Dao at the beginning of the fourth line actually betrays the poet's admiration for and wonderment at the amazing creature he creates. Let us thank Professor Lian for such a wonderful talk. This talk concludes his topic on song poems. To learn more about this topic from Professor Lian, you may read his chapter on song poems in How to Read Chinese Poetry, a guided anthology. Next week, we'll get started on topic 17, Poetry of Ming and Qing Dynasty and Professor Grace Fang will be our guest host. I hope you enjoy the talk. Let us relax and listen to a reading of the poem in Mandarin. 最中天, 勇大蝴蝶, 禅破庄周梦, 两翅架东风, 三百座名园, 一彩一个空 难道风流种, 下煞寻芳的蜜蜂, 轻轻的飞动, 把麦花人, 山过桥东, To the tune, Heaven in a Drunkard's Eye, On the Big Butterfly. Having emerged from Xuanza's dream, with its two wings mounting on the spring wind, it empties three hundred gardens in one gulp. Can this be the gallant breed? How it scares away the flower chaser bees. With a gentle flap of its wings, it blows the flower vendors to the east side of the bridge. <laughs>